test, test, test. There we go. Okay. And so that's what buzzes. It's the TV. How's everybody doing? Stacy, how long since you slept? <laughs> well, I see, because you just came off duty, didn't you? All right. I, do they let you sleep occasionally on duty? Okay. All right. Let's go to two and hope that works. There we go. All right. Good morning, everybody. So glad you guys are here. Let me ask you, though, why are you here? <laughs> to learn how to farm. I'll accept that. Anybody else? That's that is the answer right there. That's it. <laughs> so, what is my expectation of the result of you being here today? That we put it into use. Yes. Thank you. Because the goal of training is action. The goal of training is action, to actually do something. Because it is kind of fun to come to the classroom and see all our friends and chit chat, but the whole purpose of coming to the classroom is to learn knowledge and skills that enables us to gain confidence to go take action. Because if we don't have confidence, we won't do anything right. We'll be so scared. But if we get knowledge and skills, we gain confidence, we take action. So today, we're at the end in Exxon, E-X-O-N-N, -E focus on neighborhood. And originally, when I envisioned the Exxon Lead Generation campaign, I was going to focus exclusively on geographic farming as our neighborhood emphasis. Um, I am evolving and growing uh, in my understanding of agent productivity, and so neighborhood has morphed and expanded in concept a little bit from the original vision back in January. So instead of just focusing on geographic farming today, we're going to look at three different kinds of farming and I'm going to share with you the latest information that I have on very effective ways to farm. Okay? So, and as you know, as always, feel free, jump in, um, questions, objections, whatever. Love that. Okay? So, did everybody get a manual when you came in? Did anybody get a manual? Okay. <laughs> we'll take care of that right now. There you go. And Rose, did you get one? No, there you go. You're welcome. Okay, so Rose, could you be our designated passer outer if anybody else comes in late? Oh, sure. Okay, so fantastic. So let me first of all just describe the three different types of farming that we're going to look at. The first is geographic farming, which, uh, by the way, we studied back in February. Some of you may have attended that class. Hi, Raquel. Does everybody know Raquel? Raquel Sanchez? She's our, she's our newest Raquel Sanchez, because we have one at the front desk also, right? Uh, but Raquel has joined us as of, what, officially yesterday, Monday or something, two days ago. Uh, can I tell them a little bit about you? Sure. All right. So, what are, what are you tell just them? the public information. <laughs> just, <laughs> uh, no, Raquel has, is a fairly new agent, was licensed last fall. Uh, joined a team at another office um, in our community as a buyer's agent, um, has gotten very busy very quickly and decided to spread her wings and establish her own real estate practice and, uh, and so has transferred to our office to do that. But she's already got a bunch of people uh, that she's working with and uh, I think you're going to see her career really take off quickly. So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> okay. So, um, let's see. Rose, did you do your job when Raquel came in? 
<laughs> you got it. You did it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Appreciate that. So the three kinds of farming. Let's dive into it. Geographic farming, which is cultivating business in a defined geographic area. Okay. Inverness Estates, the Estates of Willow Creek, Alden Bridge, um, Oak Ridge North, whatever it is, a defined geographic area. Demographic farming is a little bit different. It's cultivating business for, uh, from clients who share certain sociological or demographic traits. For example, uh, people over the age of 55 who live in the woodlands, have a PhD, and speak Lithuanian. Okay? That's, that's a very defined group of people. Um, and it can be farmed very effectively. We'll get into that. And then the third way is network farming. <coughs> and if you were here last week, you know that network includes what we would typically think of our sphere of influence, past clients and customers, friends and family, uh, people from church, people from the neighborhood, people from the fitness club, people that we know within our circles of association. But I also include in network people that you perhaps don't know personally yet, but have responded to your marketing efforts. Okay? So if you're, for example, geographic farming, and somebody responds to one of your postcards and logs onto your website or calls you, they go into the network. And the reason for that is, in, in my strategy, folks in the network get very high touch attention. Okay? And if somebody raises their hand like that, that means they are now extremely likely to do business with me. So I put them into my network. Okay? Just like my mama. My mama buys a house in Houston. Guess who she's going to use for a realtor? Okay? So somebody in my farm area says, hey, I'm thinking about selling my house. There's a high likelihood that we're going to do business together. Okay? So, <clears throat> somebody explain the M&M's. This is our network, that's correct. These are the friendly folks who know us by name, right? The green M&M's. That would be demographic, people who share the same demographic characteristics. And then the multicolored M&Ms? It's just broad. It's anyone in one area. Yeah, it's, it's a geographic area, but it could be people from all different demographic groups within that geographic area, right? And you really don't know um, who's going to have a real estate need or who's more likely than another. Because you're, you're kind of like a farmer, you're casting your seed you know, out there on the soil. You don't know where it's going to land. Okay, so that's why we have the three different types of M&Ms illustrating these three different groups that we're going to be talking about. Okay, so let's get into the first one, geographic farming. And uh, I'm going to roll through this as quickly as I can. Um, but, but let me just share with you right up front. I think geographic farming, if you're in this for the long term in this market, you should have a geographic farm. Absolutely. Um, it, 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 geographic farming is the hardest type of farming I'm going to teach today. It requires the highest level of commitment. Um, and yet, and, and that's kind of why I say only if you're in it for the long term and you're committed to a specific geographic area for the long term, it can become highly efficient over time. But I'm talking two, three, four years in. So you have to be committed for the long term. So there's the long-term commitment. It requires money. Not all prospecting and marketing sources require money. Okay? Uh, you can do an open house strategy and spend little or no money once you get your signs, right? I mean, pick up a package of cookies and some Kool-Aid. That's really, that you're, it's very inexpensive. Calling expires is extremely inexpensive. Um, and yet farming does require some money. Now I'm gonna coach you down the most frugal path that I know. And if you're not fam familiar with the EDD program, you're going to be blown away by how inexpensive it is to, to postcard farm geographically. And then finally, it requires a commitment that goes well beyond sending postcards. And that's why I have the farmer here following the ox. You know, he's down in the mud. It really is hard work. There are some forms of farming, which we'll talk about today, that you can send a postcard and be done with it and be highly effective. That is not true of geographic farming. 
Okay, particularly in highly desirable areas, there's probably several agents sending postcards in there. Okay, and in highly desirable areas, the, the homeowners tend to know that they have options and they don't necessarily respond to a stranger just because they got a postcard. Okay, so in geographic farming, you have to establish yourself as the hub of the neighborhood. You have to be deeply involved, physically present in a number of ways, which we're going to talk about. So it, it's a commitment. But again, it's a commitment I would make if you're in it for the long term and, and committed to one specific neighborhood. Okay? All right, so here's the basic strategy. First of all, you, you have to calculate your transaction benchmark. And uh, those of you who've been in a business planning class with me or a business planning consultation know that number, right? It, it's the number of transactions based upon your average sale price and average commission rate to fully fund your financial requirements over the next 12 months. So who knows their transaction benchmark and would be willing to share it with us? Yes? 16, okay. Okay, 16. Your benchmark is your minimum acceptable. Yeah, so it's always the minimum. It's not necessarily your your ultimate aspiration. It's doggone it. If I don't make that, I'm 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 mad. I'm disappointed. Uh, I'm making some changes. Okay, it's your minimum acceptable. Anybody else have a number? Okay. I said it's acceptable to get a tattoo, as long as it's your transaction benchmark. Okay, <laughs> that's a number. You should go to sleep with and wake up, okay? 16, it's unacceptable for my business not to close 16 transactions this year, okay? It's, it's part of your mantra. Okay, but you have to know that. Then you have to determine how many of those, in your case, 16 transactions will come from your geographic farm. Um, and let's just say in this example, it's four, okay? So 25% of your business will come from this source. You multiply the number of transactions needed by 100 to determine the size of your farm. So in this case, I'm, I'm requiring four transactions from my farm. I better have a farm of 400 homes, okay? Based upon anticipated conversion rates of 1%, you'll get your four. You can't expect four and then start farming 60 houses. And I use that number because I got an email from an agent yesterday saying, hey, Frank, I got my farm. It's 60 houses, okay? That's perfectly fine if you want less than one transaction from your farm this year, okay? <laughs> that would be unacceptable to most people, all right? Okay, um, identify your target market. And I have some suggestions if you're like, okay, but let me ask right up front, who has a geographic farm right now? You've, are you actively farming it or have you just identified it? I've identified it. Okay, anybody else identified an area? Identified, identified. Have you started farming? You're, you're ready, okay. <laughs> that's right, you've taken the second step. That, that's fantastic. Okay, but here are my suggestions. Convenient to home or office, you know, and I know there's hot stuff going on, you know, out there in Porter, okay, but I wouldn't necessarily farm that unless I live in Porter, okay, uh, or up on, on Lake Conroe. You want this to be on your normal path where you drive your kids to school or where you go to the club or wherever it is because it's more than just postcards. You're gonna be the hub of the neighborhood. You're gonna be present physically, and so you want it to be somewhere that's convenient, not currently dominated by another agent. And I define dominant as 20% personal market share. Is there one agent in that neighborhood who's doing one out of five transactions? And you can determine that very simply from HAR. Just do a, just do a search on sold transactions within the previous 12 months in that defined geographic area and see if one agent is on more than uh, one out of five transactions. Okay? Or just drive the neighborhood and see whose names are on the yard signs. You'll, and you'll, you'll see it very quickly. Um, you, can, you can take it from a dominant agent. It will just take longer and be more expensive. Okay? Um, but if you're committed to that neighborhood, even at 20%, that means four out of five are not doing business with that dominant agent. Okay, so there's room. It's just going to take longer and be a little more expensive. Average sale price within your preferred range. If your business plan calls you to, to, to generate $300,000 on average per transaction, make sure, make sure your farm area delivers that. Okay, or your, your daily activities are going to be out of sync with your goals. And then finally, a reasonable turnover rate. The national average for turnover is 15%. One out of seven homes uh, changes ownership every seven years. Okay? Oh. One out of every seven homes changes ownership every year. Okay? 15%. 
So I would, I would demand at least 15% turnover rate. And again, you can calculate that by going into HAR, pull the sold transactions for the first 12 months, divide that by the total number of, of homes in the farm area, and it should be 15% or greater. Okay? And that, that, that will tell you if there's enough churn there to really make it profitable. Any questions about that? Does all that make sense? Okay, let me smart farming. Okay, now I'm going to suggest you determine the postal routes in that area using the USPS.com Every Door Direct program. How many of you all are familiar with this program already? Okay, just a couple of you. Okay, so I recommend Every Door Direct for geographic farming because it is the least expensive way to do it. And if you're making a long term commitment, which is the only way to do this, you want to be as frugal as possible. Every Door Direct does not let you mail necessarily to every home in the neighborhood. You have to mail only to the homes on a particular postal route, but you will mail to every one of those homes. So what you want to do is, is go to the, the .com website, use the map search tool, and as you drill down, just like on a Google map, the, the given postal routes will light up and you can see exactly what streets a route covers. Ideally, what you're looking for is a postal route that very closely approximates the neighborhood that you want to mail into. And I'll give you a perfect example is Alden Bridge. There is a postal route that services Alden Bridge and only Alden Bridge, but almost the entire area of Alden Bridge. That's perfect, okay? Um, it's a little bit unusual. Sometimes your, your given target area might have two postal routes that serve it, okay? Or the postal route may cover all of your target area, but then also add 120 homes over here, okay? And sometimes they skip around. They're little pockets, the pocket routes. I don't know if they just scooped up the leftovers and made one route or what. But look at it to determine if you can find a route that covers your area, okay? There's an option, by the way. If you're like, ah, oh, this postal route thing is not matching up well, then you can do bulk mail. You can just get the, the names and addresses of the homeowners, that, the only ones that you want to mail to, but now your cost is going to be 29 cents versus 17 and a half. So if you can find a route that is good enough, then I would suggest you do that. Okay? All right. Uh, establish your account, create your postcards or mailers using their size guidelines, which are very funky. I don't understand the government's rationale, but they will not allow standard jumbo or oversized postcards um, as those are normally defined. They require very funky sizes. So you can't take an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, for example, and cut it in half vertically so that now you have um, an eight and a half by five and, and a quarter, which would be a standard uh, uh, jumbo postcard. No, but you can take that same eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and cut it vertically, <laughs> okay? So that now you have a four and a quarter by 11 postcard, a funky long skinny, and the postal service says that's perfectly acceptable, okay? So, and the guidelines are very clearly on the site. So just make sure that what you're doing matches the guidelines. Um, I personally, I recommend and I do the four and a quarter by 11 simply because I can get two out of, a, out of one sheet of cardstock. Okay, so it's, it's very efficient that way. Okay, um, any questions about why we would do that? Okay, marketing. Now, once you've, you've got your account set up, I'm gonna suggest you buy a URL that appeals to sellers in your target market. Who has done that, by the way? What do you have, Rosemary? Okay. I have a zip code and property. It's called property photos. Yes. It's the zip code and then it's sent um, propertyvalues.com. Yes. And I set that up Monday. Okay. And I have the, what you recommended. iVortex Media? Yeah, it's the live um, site that you set up for you and they send all your needs there. Okay. Cool. You've done it already? Okay, I'll, I want to talk to you with you more about that, okay? All right, fantastic. So I'm going to recommend that you have one that's very much related to your target area, Alden Bridge Home Seller, okay? Oak Ridge number one agent, okay? I was farming Inverness Estates, and you know what I was able to get? Invernessestates.com. 
I, I cannot believe it was available, okay? So get, because you're going to be mailing in there, uh, touting yourself as the preferred agent in the neighborhood, and, and, a, and a URL like that validates that, okay? And then you're just going to point it to your Remax website. You don't have to create a new website. You're just going to point it there. You're going to forward it with masking so that when they go there, it, sure enough, it says oldenbridgehomeseller.com. Okay? If you need help doing that, I'm glad to help you. And then create a marketing slogan identifying you with the target market, Aldenbridge Selling Specialist, because you're going to put that on everything. For, you're going to create your own brand, uh, uh, touting yourself as the preferred agent in that marketplace. Okay, so you want to be consistent with all these things. Make sure they, send, they all send the same message. Okay, now you're going to launch your mail campaign into your geo farm. And I'm going to strongly suggest you do it with an eight and eight campaign. That's eight mailings in eight weeks. Okay, and the reason for that is a study that Hobbs Herder did several years ago in California. They went into a neighborhood surveyed all the homeowners and said if you were to sell your home today who would be your preferred agent they tallied all the results and it was very fragmented lots of different agents were chosen then they created a fictitious agent they made up one got a nice photograph nice slogan nice URL mailed into that neighborhood once a week for eight weeks at the end of eight weeks they redid the survey and said if you were to sell your home today who would be your preferred agent and the fictitious agent was way and above everybody else, the number one agent, okay? The takeaway was you can buy a number one market position in a neighborhood in eight weeks, perception-wise. You can be perceived as the top agent in the marketplace in only eight weeks, okay? So don't feel cowed by the fact that, well, I'm new, I'm a new agent, I'm new in the area, I've never taken a listing there. Come on in, Don. There's lots of good seats. In, choose any of them. Smile for the camera. <laughs> um, again, a, a, a fictitious agent who'd never had a listing, never held an open house, never sent their kids to the elementary school, number one. Yes, ma'am. How do you know that's not skewed just on the fact that it's repetition? They know that they've seen this person's death, but would they actually, do they have any actuals that that, you know what I mean, that it was true with the person? That they would actually call that person? Call that. No, it was, it was purely perception. Um, but again, perception is reality. I mean, because if, if you're a homeowner and you're going to sell and you don't, who am I going to call? Oh, well, this person, this person owns the neighborhood, okay? Um, then I'm going to suggest that you follow up once a month after that with a postcard. And, and I really like the SWBC thing because they provide the postcards for free. And I've, by the way, I've got a whole stack of sample marketing materials if anybody wants to see them. And I think I've got an SWBC co-op card in there. Um, so now you're mailing for 17 and a half cents per home and you've got free postcards. That literally means you can mail to 500 homes a month for a total cost of about $83. Okay? Crazy frugal, which enables you to have longevity. You can hang in there. Uh, and continue to do that because it's so inexpensive. I'm going to suggest about once a quarter your content for that postcard be a market update and, and not the data driven postcard you see one of those the green one that's got tables of data that you can't even my eyes go blurry looking at it. I'm talking about just a, a big a basically a cross with four pieces of information over the last 90 days these number of homes have come on the market in our neighborhood. These number of homes have sold. Here was the average list price. Here was the average sale price. That's it. It just positions you as somebody who knows what's going on in the neighborhood. Okay? And in between that, my personal recommendation is that you send testimonial postcards. Okay? Um, Stacy, do you see my postcard in there? The one with the family? Yes. yes that's so nice. Well, I got that because you said you want to do something different. That's yeah. different. And even the summer yeah. The one with the dock is really nice. Yeah, this is what I, I showed this in the network class last week, but I actually just got it in the mail. I just got them delivered to me this week. But it's uh, this is all I'm going to mail out from now on is just a, is just a photo of one of my clients, and then their little uh, quote on the back and my my contact information. The only thing that's going to every month is going to be identical. Just a new family, new quote. Everything else is the same. Because um, I don't think people are going to throw that away. I mean, they're going to throw it away. Of course they are. But I mean, on the way to the trash can, they're going to like, well, that looks like a nice family. Okay. 
That, that, and that's really all, that's the best I can hope for. Okay? Vista print. And I ordered 500. I got them for 20 cents a piece. Okay? okay? And they're, it's color one side, uh, black and white on the other. And before we're done, I'm going to share with you the, the change I'm going to make on my next one. Okay? All right. Other options, you can highlight local events, uh, sports teams, people such as new neighbors. So, for example, you don't have to feature your clients, right? You could just feature somebody new in the neighborhood, go by, get their permission, take, tell them that you're, you're the realtor, you're the preferred realtor in the neighborhood, and you do this as a regular service. You introduce the new uh, families to their neighbors with a postcard and have them stand there in front of the house looking all smiley and happy. Um, and then the quote will be a little bit different. It's not that you're just some whiz-bang realtor, but it's something like, oh, we're so happy to live in Oak Ridge. Everybody has welcomed us so warmly. Thanks a bunch. Okay, something like that. But again, it creates the perception because you're sending the card that you were the one that brought them to the neighborhood. You're not going to say that, but that's the perception that's created. Okay? You do that once a month, you're going to have that. And then, of course, sprinkled in, of course, with your own client standing there with the sold sign. And by the way, on my postcard, there's no address. I can use that postcard anywhere. Okay? They bought in the woodlands, but I can use that in Magnolia or Tomball or Spring. Okay? Okay. Um, for added impact, I'm going to suggest that you mail a just listed, just sold uh, card every time any REMAX agent's involved in a transaction in your farm area. And the message is very simple. We sold another one. We listed another one. You're not claiming personal credit, but we're all part of the big REMAX family. Okay? Again, we just listed another one creates the immediate impression that you are the listing agent. And that's what you're trying to do. Okay? Promote community events, local news, outstanding accomplishments by people and teams. Uh, okay, here's hard work. I, I said this is a lot more than postcards. For alternate postcards with door hangers every two or three months. Um, don't knock on the door. Just put a door hanger out. Um, and I think I've shared with you, I've done this twice in my little neighborhood of 180 homes. Never knocked on the door. But both times I actually talked to about five people in the neighborhood who were just out in the yards. And both times I found one of those five who was interested in selling their home. Okay? So uh, it's just a great... And then there's no postage cost. Now, now you've driven that down to zero. Okay? So... Um, Yeah, it's also brutally difficult. Um, it, it, I can tell you by personal experience, 180 homes took me about three and a half hours. Okay, um, it's a, it's a rough way to spend a Saturday or a Sunday. But again, if you're committed to that neighborhood, Lisa Roth, if she was teaching you this class, who, who is who is the neighborhood guru in our office? Um, she'll tell you that it was her door-to-door -door efforts in Harper's Landing, in addition to her mailing, um, that got her that number one position. Okay, so it, it is highly effective. All right, I'm also going to suggest you launch a Craigslist campaign. Set up an auto notification in HAR every time a new listing comes on in your geo, uh, geographic farm and then post a Craigslist ad, drawing the photos and the property description directly from HAR. Okay, giving appropriate credit in fine print at the bottom, okay, and putting your name and phone number in big print. Now, Craigslist has changed the rules lately. You can't put a live link and you can't even put a URL in the body of the ad, but you can put your name and phone number. Okay? Now, I think this is going to be highly effective, perhaps not for attracting buyers, but when you go on a listing conversation in your geo farm area, what, you're, what you can do is say, are you aware that I advertise personally every home that comes on the market in this neighborhood regardless of which broker has the listing. That means that I'm not only going to advertise your home here on Elm Street, but I'm advertising the home on Pine and the home on Birch and the home on Wisp Willow and all of these ads together are creating buyers coming into our neighborhood. So because I do that, and nobody else does, by the way, nobody else does that, there's a high likelihood that I'll be able to bring the buyer on this property. Okay? Even if they're not attracted to your home, they're going to be attracted by all the other ads that I'm placing. 
uh, for homes in this neighborhood. Okay? All right. And then, again, so much more than postcards. I'm going to suggest you conduct a community service campaign twice a year in your geographic area. Hey, Scott, come on in. I invited Scott to be here today, and that'll become crystal clear why I did so before we're done. But have a seat anywhere you'd like. Glad, glad you made it. Okay? Can food drive, use coat drive, community cleanup day. Partner with the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, somebody to do that. You provide the bags with your logo and name on it. Send them running around collecting everything. Um, it just shows that you're committed to the community. You're not just there to make money, you're there to give back and to serve. Block parties, national night out, neighborhood watch. Um, I, had, I had done this door knocking in my neighborhood, door knocking, the door hangering twice prior to Halloween last fall. Then on Halloween, we sat out in our driveway with a big bucket of candy, and the entire neighborhood came to our house. And I had this epiphany. I have been working so hard to go to them, three and a half hours in the hot sun, when on Halloween they all come to me. Why am I not taking advantage of this opportunity? So next Halloween, I'm going to take our green screen. I have a personal green screen. I've got multiple green screens. I'm going to cover my garage door with it. I'm going to set up a little photo studio right there in the driveway, have the kids stand there with their, in their costumes and their bags of candy. I'm going to take their photo, immediately drop in a nice Halloween backdrop, print it right there, and hand them the photo. And oh, by the way, my little name and Remax hot air balloon and phone number will be right there at the bottom. Okay, very tastefully presented. You know, Halloween 2014. Okay, very cheap, but going to make an impact, right? The parents aren't going to throw that one away. That one's going where? On the refrigerator. That's right. So now I've created instant awareness in my neighborhood. Oh, we have a resident realtor here. Okay, so just, just get, y'all are so much more creative than I am. Think about ways to do that, to serve your community at a way that's low cost and a lot of fun. Okay, and all these are low cost. Okay, all of them are low cost. You don't have to pay for the block party, just organize it. Okay, all right. So, hold open houses monthly. If you've got a listing, hold it open. If you don't, find another agent, a REMAX agent preferably, who's got a listing in that geo area, hold it open. If not, who does have a listing? Is it KW? Is it C21? Is it Colwell Banker? Is it Prudential? Is it No Name? Call the listing agent and say, hey, I'm committed to this neighborhood and I'd love to help you find a buyer for your home. How would you feel if I held your home open this weekend? I think you'll find a very high percentage of the time they'll say, really? You do that for me? Absolutely, I'll do that for you. How about it? Okay, I, I told you I was farming Inverness Estates last year. There was a listing that just sat forever right next door to the model home. Can you imagine the foot traffic you would generate if you held that open on the weekend and put a big cold air balloon in the yard, refreshments inside? Oh my goodness, overwhelming. You're gonna, probably going to pick up some new home buyers that you walk right back to the model and get paid a nice BTSA in addition to the commission. Okay? So just think out of the box like that. Um, the, whole, the real value of this is not the open house itself but it's the community saturation marketing that you do promoting the open house, okay? I, I recommend you get these specific directional signs that have your name on them, open house, and the arrow. Buy them in large quantity and put them everywhere in the neighborhood. I know you can't do that in the woodlands, but we sell outside the woodlands, okay? So in most neighborhoods, you can do that. Use our cold air balloons. We got a whole closet full of them over here. Put them up in the front yard. Put them at the entrance to the neighborhood. And I recommend that you, you know, spend 20 bucks, 25 bucks, and get a banner, like a, like a little two by four banner that you can drape over the balloon that again says open house with an arrow in your name. Okay? So that they'll know, they'll see the balloon, like what's that about? Oh, open house and they'll, they'll, they can follow it back, okay? And then door knock the neighbors, the nearest 50 neighbors, nearest 75 neighbors, three days prior with a property flyer on one side and an invitation to the open house on the other, okay? And then you really can door knock. On those, you can, okay? 
Cause, and you can, you can have fun with it. Hey, I don't want you having to sneak out in the middle of the night to get one of these property flyers. I know you're curious to know what the Smiths are selling their house for and you want to see the photos on the inside. Hey, I'm just going to give you one. And oh, by the way, I'm holding it open this Sunday at 2 o'clock. In fact, I'm going to be here a little early. So if you'd like a preview just for the neighbors at 1.30, feel free to come on over. Okay? That's when I'm serving the champagne. Okay? So again, you, all you're doing... And I'm joking when I say this, but if you promote it like this, you don't have to hold the open house, okay? Because you have already got so much value from the marketing efforts that go into it, okay? All right, we're about wrapping up geo farming here. This is the last thing I want to say about it. This is an opportunity for somebody. Somebody's going to get this and run with it, and it's going to be a gold mine. Find an elementary school that's in your geo area that, or that serves the students in your area. Go to the principal and say that you would like to sponsor an above the crowd recognition campaign for students where you're going to provide a little yard sign that the teachers can identify one student per quarter who has been above and beyond in their performance or their service. So it could be they got straight A's, it could be they were helpful to the other students, it could be they were most improved. The teacher can decide. They can define what above the crowd is, but one student in every class, once a quarter, gets an above the crowd award, which you, you provide the sign, and they go stick that in their yard. Right? Have you seen these before? Outstanding student or whatever? Well, in this case it says, Above the crowd student, Coleman Elementary, recognized by Remax of Cleburne. And of course, that could be your name at Remax the Woodlands in Spring. Okay? Talk about creating community awareness. Oh my goodness, Linda owns this neighborhood. Her signs are everywhere, right? Because those will go in the front yard. You made it. No, no, no. Melanie told us she was caught in traffic. Glad you came. There's a manual for you right there. Okay? So, Geographic ROI, like why would I do that? Why do we go to all that trouble? You are going to have to spend some money. I said that. But if you only got five sales at $300,000, that's $45,000 in commission. On 500 homes you're farming, you're going to invest about $6,000. Doing everything I described. Not just the postcards, but the campaigns, buying